All right, now, um, I have over here, because I, I wanted everything on the board so you could see it, I have one more that I wanted to do, which is going to clue you into what's going on, and that is x squared. Now, this again is a function you've been working with for a long time, and you've also been working with its inverse function. Um, you've been doing it probably since you were doing Pythagoras, because what is the inverse function of squaring? It's the square root, right? Now, this gets at the heart of why I'm asking us to wait for sine x until later on. Probably Mrs. Lee is going to do this for you. What does x squared look like, and how does it look in comparison to the square root of x? We know what x squared looks like, right? You can like, trace it out. You, you started to draw it in your mind already, right? Here it is. There is x squared. Are you happy with that? Now, what does the square root of x look like? Well, it begins at the origin, right here, and then here's the shape. There it is. That's the square root of x. I should label it, shouldn't I? F inverse. Okay. Let's do two things with this. Number one, uh, can you, again, turn your page 45 degrees, right? Do you, do you see the line of symmetry going through? Go ahead, draw if you've got that other color. Just like we have in all of these cases, the square root of x, just like every other inverse in the world, is a reflection. That's a really bad wonky line, sorry. Across y equals x. And you can see it, it sort of curves in, curves out. It's a really nice symmetry, actually, that I don't know if you've ever spotted before until it's highlighted for you. That's the first thing I want you to notice. The second thing is, it's not a complete reflection, is it? It's missing part. Which part is it missing? Where would it be if I reflected the whole thing? Yeah, it'd be down here, right? It would be down here. Why do we not have this guy down here? It's, it's the same as the reason we don't have everything here in sine inverse of x. It wouldn't be, th this guy here, if you included it, would not be a function, would it? Because it would violate the vertical line test, like everywhere except for the origin. Okay? So because we want the square root to be a function, because that's useful to us, we say, oh, we're going to cut that guy out. Okay? We're only going to look at this particular part of f of x. This is really important. Write this down underneath where you've drawn or beside where you've drawn this one. We restrict the domain. We restrict the domain of f of x, the original. What do we restrict it to? Which part of f of x do we look at and then reflect? We look at, I think it's domain, right? Is domain x's or y's? It's x's. You can remember it's alphabetical, right? Domain and range, x's and y's. Uh, we restrict the domain of f of x to x is, hmm, have a look. Which part gets reflected? Does this part over here get reflected? Yeah, we, we want greater than or equal to zero. We're okay with zero. That guy's fine. So we're going to say x is greater than or equal to zero. Okay? We chose that part and then we reflected it. Okay? Now, one of the weird things is you didn't have to choose that part. We didn't have to. We could have looked at this part instead and we could still have reflected that. You would have still gotten a function. Why do you think we chose this part rather than the other side? It's positive. I like positive numbers, but just because someone likes something is not a good reason to say everyone everywhere and everyone's calculators should just be this part over here. Or sorry, I should say this part over here. Why is this useful? I want to remind you again, where did we first meet square roots? We must first met square roots when we were trying to work out, hey, you have a side over here, right? You're trying to find out what it is. You got three, you got four, and you'd say, oh, that's going to be that hypotenuse there, right? That'll be h squared equals three squared plus four squared, and you have to invoke the square root function, right? Now, it would be kind of weird if we said, well, x, h squared equals 25, h is going to be the square root of 25. Oh, that's restricted to the negative value? That would be really weird, right? Square roots emerged in the context of measurement, and in measurement, things are positive, yeah? So therefore, if I'm going to get, if I want positive values out of this, I might as well restrict it to the positive values. Does that make sense? Okay. I need more space to point out one more thing and then we're going to let you have a go at actually using these things and manipulating them, okay? Uh, 
I said right at the beginning, I'm just going to run off this side here. I said right at the beginning that an inverse will just sort of reverse the direction or turn something inside out, upside down. Okay? So therefore, you can do one last fancy algebraic trick with something uh, like an inverse. Right? If you have a function like addition, right? and then you apply the inverse, which is subtraction, what do you get out the other end? You just get, well, these two things, they cancel, so you get x. Right? What if you did it with multiplication? If you had a function and then you applied its inverse, what would you get? Now, every single time this happens, you can look at all of your other examples. Okay? So therefore, if I'm using this, um, see this weird f of x, f inverse notation, how would I say this? I could say if you took f of x and then you applied its inverse, maybe I should have put square brackets to make that a little bit clearer, like so. No matter what the function you started with was, if you apply its inverse, what should you end up with? x every time. Would it make a difference if I did it in the other order? Would it make a difference if I thought about the inverse and then applied the original function to that? Would it make a difference? No, because no, look, you could do x on 2, right? Start with that guy and then apply the original function to x and you're still going to end up with x. Okay, so this here is really, really important. Put a big box around it. In some ways, it's the definition, in fact, you only really need the top one. Um, it's the definition of an inverse function. This is what makes an inverse what it is. And mathematicians really love writing things like this because they're so succinct. No flowery words in the way or no pictures. I like the pictures though because they help you get a sense of what's happening. But this is what the definition is boiled down to the lowest, okay?